Welcome to the Gospel Geek Podcast, where I will be telling stories and sharing the history of some of my favorite Southern Gospel artists. I will also be playing some of their music, so that you get a chance to hear them from the beginning of their career until now. In case you do not know who I am, and I will tell you, I am a Southern Gospel singer, and even more, a died-hard Southern Gospel music fan. I wanted to do this podcast to let you hear about the artists who have had a major impact on my life and some behind-the-scenes look at their careers as artists both on stage and off. So sit back and relax, and let's get Let's first begin with talking about the history of Southern Gospel music. This musical genre has been around for a very long time. It started back long ago when groups would travel around with hymn books and sing in various churches throughout the world. As the years went on, groups wanted to have their own songs written, so songwriters started to begin writing lyrics about Bible stories and about life, so the groups had new songs to sing to their audiences. The biggest groups to begin with were the Statesmen and the Blackwood Brothers. It was just four voices and a piano. The next period of artists included family groups like the Hensons, the Spears, and the Rambos. All of these artists had a songwriter in their group who wrote most of their songs. Southern gospel music was very valuable on the entertainment side as well, which included radio stations and TV shows, including the most popular gospel singing jubilee, where all of the major artists would sing and perform for TV, and it would be shown on Sunday mornings before church. As the years have gone on, there are many more different styles of gospel music being sung. That includes contemporary Christian music, country gospel, bluegrass gospel, praise and worship, and what we are covering today, Southern Gospel Music. They all had their place in music, and each of them included talented artists and songs. But Southern Gospel Music, I believe, has been around the longest, and that's what I have always grown up hearing. The messages in all the songs preaches a sermon and is an encouragement to everyone. So today, I wanted to focus my attention on one of my favorite Southern Gospel groups, the Mark Trammell Quartet. They offer a great representation of what true Southern Gospel music looks like. They also have a long time history in gospel music, which goes back a long time with their owner being a vital part of other major groups. We will dive into their history and check out some of their music along the way. After hearing about them, I hope they become one of your favorites too. The Mark Trammell Quartet Ministry started long before the group even started when owner and baritone singer Mark Trammell sang with award winning groups like the Cathedrals, the Kingsmen, Gold City, and Greater Vision. He learned so much from being in those groups, including both singing and the business side of the music. He was known for his famous songs like Master Builder and He Is Mine. All these groups played a vital role in his music and his personal life. While singing with the cathedrals, Mark gave his heart to Christ on a golf course one day, and he says he will never be the same. After singing with Greater Vision for several years, he felt a new calling on his life. So, he started his own group called the Mark Trammell Trio. They started in August of 2002 and released their first album a few months later. In just the next year, they made their first appearance at the National Quartet Convention, and not long after that, landed on the Singing News cover page. Throughout the next few years, their highlights include Singing News Fan Awards for both Favorite Horizon Individual and Favorite Baritone Singer Award. During this time of his life, Mark was also an ordained preacher, where he was able to bring the message to audiences on cruises, special services, and revivals. Going into 2010, something very special happened to the group, but you will have to wait until the next segment to find out what it was. Now, I want to dive into some of Mark Trammell's music and talk about Pacific songs that were important to the career of Mark Trammell and his group. The first song is The Old Rugged Cross, sung by Gold City. Your Rugged Cross is a popular hymn that was written in 1912 by evangelist George Bernard. George wrote the first verse to this song after he had received a bad response at one of his revival meetings. He had finished this song throughout the other nights of the revival and was able to perform it on the final service. After it was published in 1915, it was made popular by the preacher Billy Sunday and recorded for the first time by two of his staff. Throughout the years, it has been recorded by a multiple genre of artists, including Ford Kramer, Vince Gill, the Oak Ridge Boys, and Johnny Cash. It has also appeared on TV shows like The Voice. The version of the Old Rugged Cross played today 
is from Gold City's album titled Amazing Grace, a hymn collection that was released in 1999. Members of the group were Jay Parrick singing tenor, Jonathan Wilburn singing lead, Mark Trammell singing baritone, and Tim Riley singing bass. While Mark mostly sang baritone for the group on this particular song, he stepped up into the lead position and did an amazing job. So enjoy some of the old rugged cross by Gold City featuring Mark Trammell. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true Its shame and reproach I'll gladly bear Then he'll call me someday To my home far away his glory forever I'll share so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down What a great song. So many groups have recorded this song, but Mark Trammell singing that song makes it even more special. That song has been around a long time and will continue to be around because of its clear message. So here is Jonathan Tim with a verse that ties in with the old rugged cross. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For considering him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. The next song I want to play is a classic song titled The Eastern Gate. This song was written by Isaac Martin. Through his life, he was a part of many church denominations, including the Baptist Church, the Methodist Church, and the Church of the Nazarene. While there, he wrote the Eastern Gate as a tribute to Dr. P.F. Reese's traditional farewell gatherings of the Church of the Nazarene, where he would say, We will meet at the Eastern Gate. Another person was trying to write this song, but Martin had the words and the tune already figured out. So this became his most famous piece of music. This song talks about that gate that we will enter into heaven and be led into and what will happen when we are in heaven. This version of the Eastern Gate is sung by the Mark Trammell Trio from their second album titled Something Good that was released in 2003. Members of this group for the project include Eric Phillips singing tenor, Joseph Smith singing lead, and Mark Trammell singing baritone. So listen to this great song by the Mark Trammell Trio. Of that glad meeting With all the saints who for us wait What a blessed happy meeting Oh, just inside the eastern gate I'll need you in the morning 
what a special time when we get to step inside that eastern gate. The symbolism behind the eastern gate has been shown many times throughout the Bible. So here is a verse of scripture that Jonathan will read that talks about that wonderful thought. John chapter 14, verses 2 and 3. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Before we start into our second history section about Mark Trammell's group, I wanted to share with you how current Southern Gulfstone music artists travel and what it takes for a group to be in full-time ministry. In case you are not familiar with what artists travel in to sing, then I will tell you. Most full-time groups like the Mark Trammell Quartet travel in a bus or motor coach. These are huge vehicles that can seat four to ten people depending on their size. Some of them are very nice with TVs and double bunks, and some of them also include a bedroom. Being the size they are, it is still a very tight space and is not ideal living. Buses break down a lot and are very expensive to buy, and the equipment needed for them takes up a lot of the group's income. When groups arrive at the venue that they are singing at for the night, they will unload in the afternoon, sing between 6 and 7, and then pack up afterwards. It's a long and grueling weekend. Each member of the group usually has a specific role besides singing. For example, one member may be in charge of setting up the product table, while a couple of the other members would carry in and set up the sound equipment. The artist will then do a sound check and make sure everything is ready for the concert before grabbing a bite to eat and getting dressed for the concert. Usually, a few members of the group will be at the product table a few minutes before the concert to talk to the crowd and to take song requests. Once the concert is done, most of the group will stand at the product table to sell CDs and to greet the fans. Once everything is done, the group will pack up their stuff, load into the bus, and drive on to the next concert or home. Most groups will tell you the easiest part is the singing itself. It's just a long, hard day of waiting and being busy. Full-time groups like the Mark Trammell Quartet travel and sing about 150 to 200 dates a year, along with making a recording once a year. I hope this information was useful and you learned something new about the process of what it takes to be a traveling gospel singer. Now let's get back to some more history about the group. Back in January 2010, Mark Trammell did something he always wanted to do. He added a bass singer to his group to make them the Mark Trammell Quartet. He knew when he started his own group, he would eventually go back to what he fell in love with as a kid, and that was four-part harmony. This new addition was fan-favorite bass singer Pat Barker, who was known for his smooth singing and his infallible energy, both on and off stage. It only took a couple of years when the group got their first number one song, titled I Want to Know. It eventually became the most played song of the year in 2012. A few years later, He started his own record label called Crimson Road Productions. His quartet would record under that label just soon after it was announced. The new album featured fresh new songs like Your Walk Talks and Don't Stop Running, which was written by their lead singer, Nick Trammell, who was also Mark Trammell's only child. Under this new label, they released several Christmas albums with their friends, The Wisnets. In 2015, Mark Trammell celebrated 40 years in gospel music. Since 2015, Mark Trammell has been named Favorite Baritone for the Singing News Fan Awards. This year, Mark Trammell Quartet is celebrating 19 years of singing ministry. Their current members are Stephen Adair singing tenor, Nick Trammell singing lead, Mark Trammell singing baritone, and Randy Bird singing bass, and Trevor Conkle playing the piano. They are consistently in the top 5 and top 10 for Singing News Fan Award categories. And in 2020, they had the number two most played song on radio with God Has Provided Himself the Lamb. Mark and his group continue to tour around 200 dates a year, and they show no signs of slowing down. The next song I will play today is I Sing the Mighty Power of God. This song was written by Isaac Watts. It was originally an eight stanza text that began with I Sing the Almighty Power of God. The song was probably for children. Even though it was written for children, it has become a great hymn for adults too. This song presents a message to show the wonderful view of God's creation and includes strong lyrics and a commanding sound. This song came from the Mark Trammell's Quartet's Lifetime CD. 
The featured singers of this CD included Eric Phillips singing tenor, Nick Trammell singing lead, Mark Trammell singing baritone, and Pat Barker singing bass. One of the interesting things about this album was it was Nick Trammell's first project with the group, and it was one of the last albums that Larry Goss produced and arranged. You can hear his work all over this song. So enjoy, I sing the mighty power of God. That song shows how the God we serve is full of power and strength, and we want to show his love to others by singing of his mighty power. Jonathan has a verse of scripture that ties in with this song's message very well. Jeremiah chapter 10 verses 12 and 13 say, He has made the earth by his power, he has established the world by his wisdom, and has stretched out the heavens at his discretion. When he utters his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain. He brings wind out of his treasuries. The next song I will play is from the newest Mark Trammell Quartet album called God Has Provided. The Mark Trammell Quartet are always known for having a great set list for their concert. They always try to provide a variety of songs and comical moments to make the crowd feel welcome. This is a type of song that the group would sing a couple of songs into the program. Having a good set list and good quality music are two of the highest qualities a group can have. The March Hamill Quartet do an amazing job of both of these. One of the songs on the album talks about a great assurance we have that Jesus is coming quickly, and soon we will be on the other side. So listen to just a little while. And with Jesus. The streets of gold, and I believe, I believe his love will overflow my soul. soul. Will in just a little while, a little while, just a little while, will we, we will be, be on the other side. side? Now, my friend, have you taken the time to make your preparation? Is the blood applied and everything all right To make it to the great celebration With the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords Will ever be forevermore And in just a little while, a little just while, a little while Will we will be on the other side When in just a little while, a little just while, a little while Will we will be on the other side We'll be talking we'll with Jesus, Jesus will abide. We'll be living right off the streets of gold, and I believe, I believe his love will overflow my soul. soul. We'll in just, just a little while, a little just while. a little while. We'll we be, be on the other side. Just a little while, just a little while, just a little while. We'll be on the other side. We'll be talking, we'll be talking. and a walk, and a walk. I believe, I believe his love will 
But my soul will enjoy just a little while. A little while. Just a little while. We'll be we'll on the other side. In just a little while. A little just while. a little while. Oh, yes, we will be on the other side. It won't be long and we'll be leaving in this old world, and it will be a grand and glorious feeling. Jonathan will read a verse that talks about how close we are to leaving this old world. Hebrews 10, uh, verses 36 and 37. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. The last song I will play today is the Mark Trammell Quartet's first and so far only number one song called I Want to Know. This is an old statesman song that featured the bass singer. This version of the song featured bass singer Pat Barker and had a great orchestra arranged by the great Larry Goss. This was an outstanding quartet song with a classic sound that always had people clapping along and wanting to hear encores of it. So enjoy I Want to Know by the Mark Trammell Quartet. And I do not want I do not want to be denied Well, let me live Let me live In that city so fair And that's enough That's enough for me to know I do not know To know To know The day my Savior will come But I must be To 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 Prepared to go To 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 And if from earth I know what he will call me someday Well, that's enough That's enough for me to know Well, I want to know I want to know that he will welcome me there I do not want I do not want to be denied Well, let me live Let me live In that city so fair And that's enough That's enough for me you know, well, let me live, let me live in that city so fair. That's enough, that's enough for me. That's enough, that's enough for me. Oh, that's enough, that's enough for me. Me to know, that's enough for me. We all want to know that we are saved. We question it a lot throughout our lives. So that song rings true of the confidence that God gives us. Jonathan will read a verse that shows us just what it means to be saved. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 say that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I want to share an interview I did with Mark Trammell a few years ago about the singing at Sea Cruise that the group takes every year. My family and I have been honored to be close friends with them on the cruise and are able to sit close with them for dinner and get to know the members and their families very well. My favorite part of the cruise is the cruise. From the day we get on until we disembark, all of it. I can't pick out one little thing. I mean, the chocolate melting cake is great for dessert at night, but lunch is wonderful on the back of the ship because we got pizza 24-7. We've got ice cream 24-7. So eating is a big element, but as far as picking out a favorite part, it's just the fact that we're here. 2,200 people are here for a whole week together, and we have one common thing that ties us together and that is this great music so it's a whole week of doing what we love to do it's a taste of heaven to be honest with you. the biggest reason to do a gospel music cruise as far as i'm concerned it is the most conducive to family oriented vacation uh, the whole family can go on a gospel music cruise and you don't have to worry about bars, casinos, you don't have to worry about cigar smoke, 
none of those things. It's a complete, total Christian environment, family-oriented environment. Every member of the family can run to and fro just like they want to, on top of the fact that there's a lot of great gospel music, great preaching, things that will encourage you and inspire you after the cruise is over and keep on going. The Mark Trammell Quartet has had a major impact on my life and on a lot of other people's lives. The quality of their music, the consistency in their sound, and their joy of gospel music shines both on stage and off stage. They are who they are on stage and when they talk to people afterwards. These things make up why they are considered one of America's favorite groups. Mark has been called the best quartet man to ever sing gospel music, and I believe that is true because I have watched him and the way he draws an audience into the message of his singing. It is unmatched, and he will go down as one of the all-time best in gospel music. So do yourself a favor and go see the Bart Trammell Quartet, or go buy some of their music from their website, marktrammellministries.com. You will be blessed and encouraged just like I always am. Before I close, I want to thank you for watching this podcast. I want to thank my roommate, Jonathan Tim, for reading the Bible verses. If you have never heard of Southern Gospel Music, I highly suggest you follow me for more great podcasts like the one you just heard, and check out some of the big gospel music events like the National Quartet Convention, the Singing at Sea Cruise, and the newest gospel music event featuring 40 days and 40 nights of the best in Southern Gospel Music, including the Mark Trammell Quartet and some amazing speakers as well at the Great Ark Encounter, coming up in August of 2021. Speaking of the National Quartet Convention, Mark Trammell has been a vital part of the NQC Board of Directors for many years. I'm sure most of you have heard about NQC, but let me explain it real quick. It is a full week of Southern Gospel music, including nightly concerts, matinees, and daily chapel services, featuring the top groups in gospel music. It is an incredible experience, for the first time fan or a long time fan. The Mark Trammell Quartet and most all of the other groups have social media accounts you can follow and like to get more information about the artist. Most groups have been open to doing Facebook and YouTube concerts live during this pandemic, so there is plenty of videos and new content to watch. Mark's group and many others use bands in town to advertise their singing dates with. So make sure you go track them so that you will know when they will be in your area. If you want to book them in concert, make sure you contact the Hopper Agency because they would be glad to add your church or venue to their schedule. I hope that you've enjoyed this podcast because this has been my first attempt at one. So I hope you will forgive my mistakes and continue to follow and enjoy this music I have provided in each podcast. This music sure helps me in my daily walk with Christ. And so I hope you have been informed and encouraged throughout this podcast. And I hope you come back for my next one featuring one of Gospel Music's favorite mixed groups, the Perrys. Thanks and have a great day. Well, I want to know, I want to know that he will welcome me there. I do not want to. That's enough. That's enough.